Consider supporting Arkea Soup on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in the video description. Did you know? If I called you a pea brain, you'd probably be quite insulted. After all, brain size is important. Big brains indicate intelligence, intellectual vigor, and potential. You would understandably demand an apology. My brain's not small. But people in ancient times seemingly didn't value the brain as much as we do today. Indeed, some people even threw brains away. Ancient Egypt is probably the world's most famous early civilization. The ancient Egyptians were undoubtedly and are famously clever, but did they value their brains? After all, the Egyptians believed that the physical body in some way continued in the afterlife, and that grave goods buried with the dead would be of use to people in the next realm. With this in mind, famously in Egypt, mummification was intended to preserve the body. And yet, not all parts of the body were preserved. One of the facts that all schoolchildren revel in learning is that the brain was removed through the nose with a hook during the mummification process, and then it was thrown away. The stomach, intestines, lungs, and liver were stored in sacred canopic jars, and crucially, the deceased's heart was left in place, preserved with the body through a combination of drying out the body and the application of certain substances. Unfortunately, in the case of Tutankhamun, the process seemingly went wrong, or was rushed, and the boy king was physically glued inside his sarcophagus. Nonetheless, if your goal is to dry out the body, the brain, I'm afraid, simply has to go. After all, the brain is almost 80% water, and soon after death it begins to decay, that liquid doesn't stay in one place. And besides, the ancient Egyptians, along with other ancient civilizations, believed it was the heart where one's soul, intelligence, and personality resided. It was the heart that would be weighed in the afterlife, and it was the heart that had to stay with the body. And so, many will tell you the Egyptians thought the brain was rubbish, something to be thrown away. Except that's not quite true. The so-called Edwin Smith Papyrus is an ancient Egyptian medical textbook. It is the oldest known guide for treating physical trauma, likely intended to be used in a military context. The document contains 48 injury case studies, and of those, 27 specifically about head injuries. Indeed, this is the oldest written record referring to the brain. Case study number 6 in this papyrus gives us the words for the corrugations on the surface of the brain, the membrane surrounding the brain, and the cerebrospinal fluid inside the brain. Case study number eight is for a man with a fractured skull and a damaged brain. The right-hand side of the brain has been damaged, and the right-hand side of the body has been paralyzed. Now, of course, the right-hand side of the brain controls the left-hand side of the body, but it seems in this case the impact hit the brain so hard that it wibbled like a jelly and damaged itself on the left-hand side inside the patient's skull. They didn't quite understand this, but nonetheless an observation was made that the brain is linked with the patient's ability to move freely. Case study number 22 involved a patient with a fractured temporal bone. It was observed that this patient, as a result, was unable to speak, because the brain had been damaged. And so an inference was made that the brain is connected to the patient's ability to speak. But just as we would not claim that our tongues and our mouth are where our words come from, we consider that to be a thought process that occurs in the brain, 
The ancient Egyptians did not consider the personality driving the speech to be coming from the head, rather from the heart. According to the ancient Egyptians, the brain, the head, the mouth, the entire body was driven by the soul, the personality, the intelligence within the heart. So you see, being called a pea brain isn't so bad after all, especially if you don't consider your brain to be where your personality and intelligence resides. This may sound strange to most modern people, but actually we're not so different from the ancient Egyptians. Having your heart in the right place, being passionate, showing compassion and love, home is where the heart is. These and so many other values and virtues associated with the heart are with us to this day. Perhaps, sometimes, it's not such a bad thing being a pea brain. <laughs>